Hello everyone, Jedera10, aka Jed from Snowby.com here, and today I'm going to show you exactly how to size a snowboard correctly. I think there's a lot of information out there that's teaching people to size snowboards the wrong way, so I'm going to set it straight and show you guys exactly how you should be sizing snowboards. And on top of that, I'm also going to show you exactly how to pick the perfect snowboard that's right for you. So besides sizing, there's things like how to get the right flex for your snowboard, what shape do you need, what type of camber is best for you. I'm going to cover all that in this guide, so stick around and let's get into it. Okay, so let's start with sizing a snowboard correctly because that seems to be where a lot of people get mixed up and where there's a lot of people teaching the wrong things. So firstly, you may have heard that when you size a snowboard, you should size it up to your chin so they base it on height and that is completely wrong. You should not size a snowboard based on your height. Snowboard sizing is based on weight. You want to use your weight to determine how big the snowboard you want is going to be and also you want to look at what type of riding you want to do to determine how big the snowboard or how small you want it to be. So let's get into this. So I've actually built this guide here for my readers on snowby.com. I'll show you later how to grab this guide, but I'm just going to use it as a reference while I show you guys how to size a snowboard correctly. So here we go, how to choose a snowboard. Okay, so snowboard sizing. As I said, it's based on two things, your weight and what you want to ride. So I'm going to show you exactly how I do it myself if I were buying a new snowboard right now. So let's say I'm buying the snowboard that I use currently, which is a K2 Parkstar, and it's a 155. But let's say I don't know that I want a 155. So I'm going to go here to k2snowboarding.com. Okay, so snowboards, men's, okay, page two. Here we go, K2 Parkstar. Okay, so what you're looking for is what they call the weight range. Every company has a weight range for their snowboards. What you're looking for is a size chart or size specs. There you go. Size specs. So the weight range for your snowboard, you want to look at the size column and then you want to scroll across to the weight range. So let's look at a 155. It's a weight range of 130 to 200 pounds. So what that means is the lightest you want to be is 130 and the heaviest you want to be for this board is 200. Now that's a huge weight range I know. But generally, if you're buying, say, a snowboard that's going to be your do-everything snowboard, your all-mountain snowboard, you want to be roughly in the middle of that weight range. So you want to be in the middle of 130 to 200, which is, let's say, roughly is 160 or something like that. So that's how you find the size, roughly. But then you want to alter it by what you want to ride. So let's go to our handy little guide again. Oh, too far. Okay. Oh, by the way, in the guide, there's this handy little chart I made. It's pretty rough, but it gives you a decent start. So it shows you where your weight is going to be versus what size snowboard you want to be. So it'll give you a range to start with. It's just something to work with because not every snowboard company is that helpful on your website. Not everyone lists weight ranges and that sort of thing. So this way, at least you have a rough guess of what size to start with. Okay, so as I said, your type of riding is going to determine how big or how small you want your snowboard to be. So all mountain is in the middle of the recommended weight range. If you're riding powder, you're going to be hitting large. So let's say I like a 155 or 157 somewhere. Oh geez, for me, I'm 155 pounds, that's 70 kgs, I'd roughly be on about a 155-ish for an all-mountain snowboard. But let's say I wanted a powder snowboard, so I want to size up because for powder you want a larger snowboard. So I'd go move to a, from a 155 to everything up to a 159 even, 157, 159, 160. Everything is bigger for powder because bigger means you can float better in the powder and you're not going to sink as easily. Okay, next we have park and freestyle. So if you want to do a lot of park and freestyle, you're going to be sizing down from average, which means that, let's say I'm on a 155 for my all mountain, I'd be sizing down to a 152. 
So you want to size down a little bit more generally because it helps you with spinning and maneuverability on your snowboard, which helps in the path. The only exception to this rule is if you're hitting really big jumps. If you like big jumps, you want to keep that size at an, roughly an all mountain level even because it helps with stability. When you're hitting big jumps, you're going fast, you want that size. That's why I ride a 155, even though I could be riding about a 152 for park. So yeah, it, it, a lot of this is personal preference, guys. I'm going to give you rough estimates of what you should be riding, but at the end of the day, a lot of this comes down to personal preference. I'm giving you the starting point, though. Okay, so rails and urban freestyle. If you're hitting a lot of rails and a lot of boxes and urban freestyle hits in town or something like that, building your own little jumps onto rails, you're going to be wanting a shorter snowboard. Shorter snowboards, as I said, are easier to maneuver and you don't really need the stability because you're going to be hitting rails all day. Okay, so next we have flex. Flex is basically how flexible your snowboard is, so it's exactly as it sounds. I'm going to use a number system here from 1 to 10. So we're going to say that 1 is the most flexible and 10 is super stiff and not flexible at all. So not every snowboard company will give you a flex system from 1 to 10, but they'll tell you if it's a mid flex or it's if it's stiff or if it's really flexible for riding rails, that sort of thing. So let's say that we want an all mountain snowboard. So for an all mountain snowboard, you want to have a medium flex to maybe it's barely above medium flex. So you want something like a 5 to a 7 out of 10 on the flex rating scale. So for powder, you want a stiff snowboard. Usually powder anything from a 7 or 8 to 10 out of 10. Generally for people that aren't going to be doing freestyle, they're going to be free riding and hitting powder and that sort of thing, you want a nice stiff board. For park and freestyle, generally you're going to be about medium in between. So you'd be about a 4 to a 7 out of 10. That whole mid-range is where most people choose their park boards. For rails and urban freestyle, you're looking at super flexible. So it, super flexible makes it easy for nose and tail presses and easy to flex your snowboard. So you're looking at a 2 to 3 to a 4 out of 10. Everything in that low super flexible range. Okay, so next we have width. How wide does your snowboard need to be? So there's three main options when you're look, talking about the width of your snowboard. You have regular width, mid-wide, and wide. So typically you're not going to need a wide snowboard, that's mainly for large feet, but most people are going to be on an average width snowboard. Now the way to tell what width snowboard you need is bring your snowboard boots with you to the store and put them roughly where your bindings are going to be on your snowboard. So when they're on the snowboard there, look at the toe and the heel of the snowboard, see if it hangs off the snowboard. Now a little bit of hang is okay, so let's say your toes stick out one inch over the toe side of the snowboard and the heels stick out one inch over the heel side of the snowboard. That's normal, that's fine. But if you're getting more than about an inch of toe hang and an inch of heel hang, heel hang on each side of the snowboard, you generally want to look at getting a mid-wide or wide snowboard. Okay, so picking the right shape. Shape is exactly how it sounds. It's how your snowboard is shaped. So there's three main shapes. You have twin snowboards, twin-ish snowboards, or directional snowboards. So twin snowboards are completely symmetrical. So that means there's no difference in the shape of the nose and the tail. You can ride it switch, you can ride it regular. It's going to be the exact same snowboard either way. For example, my K2 Parkstar right now, that's a twin snowboard. I actually have it set up as a goofy snowboard even though I'm regular. That was a mistake at the start of the season, but it honestly it doesn't matter because it's a twin snowboard. It rides exactly the same whether I'm going switch or I'm riding regular. So twin snowboards are great for freestyle riding, park riding. That's generally what people pick twin snowboards for because they'll be doing a lot of switch. So if you think you're going to be doing something like a 50% switch or 50% riding, you want to aim at a twin snowboard. Twin-ish, or a directional twin as some, they're sometimes called, that means it's nearly a twin, but the, low, the nose of the snowboard is usually a little bit larger to help with floating in powder and to help with free riding and to help with, with just general regular riding. So twin-ish means you still ride switch, but you have a preference for regular riding. So you, you, it's still your dominant riding, but you're going to ride switch a little bit here and there. So... Okay, next. Directional. 
Directional means that it's it's mainly you're going to be riding regular nearly all the time. So directional snowboards are built so that it's easier to ride regular than it is to ride switch on them. But at the end of the day, guys, remember that this is personal preference. There's riders who ride amazing switch on directional snowboards. You can still do it. So it's just personal preference. This is just a really loose, rough guide for you. Okay, so next we have camber. So camber comes in a four main types. You have regular camber, reverse camber, zero camber, and hybrid camber. So on this picture, as you can see, regular camber means that it's a banana curving down. So that's what your snowboard looks like. Reverse camber means it's a banana curving up. So the tips go up from the middle of the snowboard. And zero or flat camber means there's no camber. It's just completely straight against the ground. And hybrid camber basically means it's some sort of mix between regular and reverse, reverse camber. So with that sort of thing, hybrid camber could be, let's say you have regular camber in between for 50% of the snowboard, then the tips have reverse camber or some sort of mix. Hybrid camber is kind of a complicated topic, but I'll get into that in a bit. So regular camber. Regular camber is good for getting stability when you're riding fast. It has a bit of a nice spring to it. And it's good for hitting big jumps because it has good pop. Generally, regular pam camber is yeah, it's a good all-round snowboard, but it's kind of a dying breed these days. It's not as popular with a lot of snowboard companies. Everyone seems to be going the hybrid camber route. But don't discount regular camber. I still love regular camber, even though I ride with um, a hybrid camber board. It has its place, it has its uses, and remember it's personal preference. Okay, so next we have reverse camber. So reverse camber is generally it's great for powder. It makes it really easy to float and keep that nose up in the powder. So that way you don't dig that nose in and cartwheel and crash. And it's also good for freestyle riding if you're doing rails and boxes. So if you're doing things like tail presses, nose presses, it, it's really easy to do fun presses on a reverse camber snowboard because the nose and tails already want to go up. Okay, so next we have zero or flat camber. That's basically, it's just a middle ground. It's in between regular camber and it's and, reg and reverse camber. So it's not one or the either. It's just in between, it's that middle ground. Next we have hybrid camber. So hybrid camber is where everyone seems to be build building snowboards right now. Hybrid just means there's some mix of reverse and regular camber. So what a lot of companies do these days is something like the middle of your snowboard is regular camber and the tips are reverse camber or the middle of your snowboard is reverse camber and the ends are regular camber. It, it's a whole sort of mix. Everyone has their own different mix of hybrid camber on your snowboard. So every company is going to have a different feel to it. That's why you honestly with snowboards, it's great if you can demo it because no one can really say that all hybrid cambers feel the same way. Every hybrid camber snowboard is going to feel different from each different company because everyone chooses to build hybrid camber snowboards differently. For example, my K2 Parkstar, that's a hybrid camber snowboard with zero camber in between and reverse camber on the tips. So everyone does it differently. It's all mixing and matching and honestly, it's a lot of trial and error to find out what you like in a hybrid camber snowboard. Okay. That was complicated, but hybrid camber is a complicated topic. So one last tip with snowboards is that, as I said through this whole guide, it's personal preference. There's no set thing that says you have to use this for that. For example, Torstein Hogmo, who he's one of the top freestyle snowboards in the world. He's been known to ride a short snowboard when hitting big jumps, which is completely different from what everyone else normally does. When you hit big jumps, you want to usually have a bigger snowboard for stability. But for him, he prefers a short snowboard. So remember, it's all personal preference at the end of the day. I give you a starting point and knowing what you like, if you prefer hybrid camber, regular camber, all of that helps. And all of that factors into your decision at the end of the day. Okay, so if you want a copy of this guide, it's totally free. I built it for my snowme.com readers and I just give it out to anyone in the snowme community. So basically it covers how to choose a snowboard, which is what I went through today. It also covers how to choose the right bindings, how to choose boots that fit and don't make your feet hurt, how to choose gloves, how to choose goggles and what lens colors do what, how to choose a helmet, how to choose your outerwear, what the waterproofing levels mean and all that sort of thing. 
and also how to layer your snowboard gear. So that just basically just covers how to stay warm. So it'll teach you which layers to put where, base layers, middle layers, outer layers, all that sort of thing for you to stay warm and layer your clothing correctly so that you're not cold on the snowboard slopes. Okay, so if you want this guide, as I said before, it's totally free. I'll put a link up on this page somewhere where you can sign up to be part of the Snowby community, which means you get this guide for free and I send you free snowboard tips like how to do 360s better and all that sort of good stuff. But yeah, it's totally free. The link's on the page somewhere right now. And if you like this video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe. Thanks guys.